Hi, my name is Jorgo and welcome to this video focusing on photographic inspiration. First of all, warm welcome. We are now over 30 subscribers, which is amazing. I never thought that that was going to happen. So thank you very much. We're actually a classroom now, which is kind of cool. I feel that there's a gap, especially in the photographic community, where we don't talk about inspiration as much as we talk about gear or presenting our work, which can inspire us to create stuff. But I would like to focus more on the inspirational part. So inspiration is a really hard topic because what inspires me doesn't necessarily inspire you or someone else. But the common denominator for inspiration is that it drives us to create something. For me, I want to create a photograph. But the problem that I have, and I'm thinking a lot of you may have the same problem, is that I can't act on the inspiration when it comes. For me, inspiration, it's, it's triggered by a spark. I get a, like a, something happens, I, be, I feel inspired for a few days or so, maybe one or two days, and then it slowly disappears. I can be happy during this, this period of time. I can feel a little bit, yeah, but it's, it slowly dies out if I don't act on it. And after a day or so, I can actually feel a bit down if I haven't created anything from this inspirational spark that I had. If you recognize yourself in this kind of situation, try lowering the bar. With time, we all get better at stuff, right? We get better at Photoshop, we get better at Lightroom, we get better at understanding light or color theory. And I usually want to apply my new skill sets on newly created photos, which is kind of weird because I have tons of old photos that I've taken previous years that I actually just have forgotten. So to lower the bar, what I'm doing is that I'm taking up an old hard drive, looking at some old photos and seeing them with new eyes and new set of skills. Take for instance, this photograph. This photograph is not good. It's a tree. The composition is okay. I mean, it's a tree dead in the center with symmetry surrounding it, which is kind of okay. And I can actually work with this photograph. Uh, so what I'm thinking when I'm seeing this photograph is that I can prove it using three things. I can either use light, contrast or colors. And for this particular photograph, I don't feel that there's anything I can do with lighting. The contrast yeah, the, the photograph is already a pretty contrasty, so I, I don't think there's so much I can do there either. So what I'm left with is color. So I have green and blue. I need to create a color palette using these two colors and maybe one or two more colors that are in symmetry with these colors that already exist. There's a great tool online for this called Adobe Color Wheel. So if you just Google Adobe Color Wheel, you will eventually find it. I will also link it in the description below. I already had green and blue. I chose to have a three color palette in this photograph. Using the hue saturation layers, I ended up with this photograph. So there's nothing natural about this photograph. It's not a photograph of the actual tree on the actual location. This is photographic art, so it doesn't have to be in my opinion. But these colors make this photograph more interesting than the original one. I hope this might have inspired you to revisit your old images because I'm sure you have plenty and try to apply your new skill sets on them. And also feel free to share your work down in the comments section. I would love to see what you have done. If you like this video, don't forget to push the like button. And if you want to see more from me, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.